So we're so excited to have you back. And um, let me fix my camera. I'm a little getting cut of my head cut, cut off a little, which isn't so bad. Um, so we had you on last, last, well, two weeks ago, right? Um, so it was there two weeks ago and we got a lot of feedback of people. People know that um, my biggest journey in my life was really um, fighting um, fertility issues. And when I found found you, I feel like ah, it was like the right medicine I needed um, to have my gorgeous daughter. So um, we're going to probably keep doing these because we do have a lot of feedback um, and a lot of questions. I mean, a lot. So okay. um, I know that today our topic is going to be um, caffeine. Yeah. But I just want to um, ask a couple questions before because this has been the one thing that people consistently ask. They okay. ask... Do you need to do acupuncture if you're trying to get pregnant? Well, obviously you don't need to. If you're people, struggling. If you're struggling. I mean, if you're struggling, and you, it means you need help. So whether it's acupuncture, nutrition, I mean, there are many avenues you can take. So really, it's all about reaching your goal. So if you want to get pregnant and you're having trouble, I think... I, I like integrating the Western side as well, at least getting information. Right. Just to see where people are at, because then I know what I'm looking at. It's also good to rule stuff out and figure out why you're having problems. Right. Yeah. So it could be anything from cysts on your ovaries to blocked fallopian tubes, fibroids, polyps, endometriosis. There are, I mean, antibody. There are a number of things that can inhibit you from getting pregnant. So the first thing is finding out why you're having trouble. Then, of course, there's like the male factor too, right? Yeah, which no one ever wants to look at. I mean, most men don't want to look at it, but you know. Thank God my husband was a trooper. So that that's a your husband is amazing. <laughs> so it's it was a, it's a good thing that he's a trooper. So yeah. um, that was one of the things people are asking, and they're asking, like. How many times would you suggest that someone would get acupuncture? Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the person because sometimes the problem isn't necessarily getting pregnant. It could be staying pregnant. It depends on why they're having a problem getting pregnant. So if it's some sort of obstruction, like a cyst or a blocked fallopian tube, that will be a different scenario. If it's um, low ovarian reserve, that's another issue, right? So it could be, typically we want three months at minimum to try to get pregnant. And what you're doing is trying to resolve the issue. So it, I mean, it really does depend on the person, but I'd say like a solid three months, once a week. Right. It also is going to be a lot of like dietary and lifestyle changes. If you're not already on that, yeah. on that path. Yeah. Yeah, I know for me, I was going weekly and um, I went weekly and I think I stayed weekly the whole pregnancy because I was really like, um, mm. I was getting great results and I had a really, really healthy pregnancy. And for someone of my age, it, it meant a lot to me. And also the one thing I can say about acupuncture for me was um, the relaxing part of it. Like it was like yeah. that I would go into the room, what's going on, this and that, I mean, would check me out. And then... I really just got to like, I really felt like I had these out of body experiences and you can't really relax so much when you're going through IVF and you're trying to get pregnant and you're so concerned, like, is it going to stay? Like what's going on? And that was like my time that, and that's what I miss right now. Cause now I have a toddler and I have no time to go and see you yeah. and get my little Zen on. So, um, yeah, I think that that's, it's really key. Like for me, stress was keeping stress out of my life was key. Well, I mean, I kind of love that you say that because that will really set the stage for today's talk. <laughs> so there's, so as we're going to talk about, um, about this session today is about caffeine. So when I, this is an interesting topic and people do ask all the time. Cause when I tell people that when I went to Rena and she told me like no chocolate, no caffeine, my doctor my OB was telling me completely opposite. My OB was like, eh, have a cup, have as much chocolate as you want. I don't care about that stuff. I don't care. Just don't smoke is all he said. Even if you want a glass of wine, go ahead. And I was like, what? Your so, OB or your RE? Then I asked Rena and Rena, oh my God, she was 
strict, but I list, I took her advice because for me, you're struggling so hard to get pregnant. You finally get pregnant. You have this miracle growing it. And it is, if people out there that want to get pregnant, you will get pregnant, but it is like, you've waited so long to have this happen. And like, why would you want to like drink a cup of coffee to mess with it? Well, yeah. And if you look at what happened with you, not only did you get pregnant and carried a term, but you had an amazing pregnancy. The entire pregnancy was awesome. Yeah, it was. I can't, I have no, like I would do it 10 times again if I could, if I was younger, I would. But can you maybe tell us like why, like why would you suggest that it's bad? And then the other thing is also, um, is it like, can they have decaf if they want to have decaf? Okay. So kind of looking at back at what we talked about the last time we talked about how turmeric and doing a lot of anti-inflammatory foods can be detrimental to fertility because it impacted the environment that you need for a healthy pregnancy. And so it's really about the environment. You're trying to create an environment. And so when you, um, we, we thrive in different types of environments, right? So we're totally um, impacted by our environment. And so as soon as you introduce something like caffeine, you change the environment, right? And it's kind of, this is a big controversial topic because like you said, your doctor was like, it's fine, no problem, yeah. right? And so, a lot of the studies that have been done on caffeine, like we just kind of have to take them with a grain of salt. We have to know who did the study, who paid for them, you know, because a lot of the studies say it's okay to drink caffeine, right? Like, I mean, if you do research, a lot of the research says, well, as long as, you know, you keep it under 200 milligrams a day, you're fine. But if you look at what caffeine does in the body and the responses throughout all the different systems in the body. And then you look at how those responses in the system impact fertility. It's very clear that caffeine isn't a good thing. Right. Right. So if you first look at um, what happens in the brain, as soon as you like, first of all, caffeine does cross the, the blood brain barrier. And as soon as you drink caffeine, you start blocking these these receptors called adenosine receptors. And adenosine is there to let you know you're tired, but you basically block those receptors to make you feel no longer tired. And we think caffeine gives us energy, but the reality is it just makes us not feel tired. And then we start operating on like, almost like using a credit card instead of cash. Right. You know? And so, so now all of a sudden there's a chain reaction of events that will happen in the body. Right. So, now you have what's called the hypothalamic pituitary access that's triggered. Um, you also don't have conversions taking place in the brain glutamate to GABA. So like GABA is one of your main relaxation, like inhibitory neurotransmitters. And if you're not making enough of that, you start feeling more anxious. And so that's why some people might feel anxious drinking uh, caffeine, right. right? But now you're also signaling the stress mechanism through that HPA access. So your body starts releasing adrenaline and noradrenaline and cortisol. You get vasoconstriction, right? Your heart rate goes up yeah. and now you're having a stress response in the body. And this happens with any kind of caffeine. Different caffeines react a little differently. So whether it's coffee, black tea, green tea, it is a little different white teas. They have different amounts. But ultimately, in the end, you go into this kind of fight or flight. And so now the blood is being diverted from um, your systems, like your GI system and your reproductive system. So your, your ability to absorb nutrients properly and maintain balanced hormones get thrown off because everything's being thrown into the muscles. And so the other thing that's interesting is when cortisol goes up, um, DHEA goes down, which is your precursor what? to estrogen. Yeah. Yeah. That's and so crazy. If, yeah. And so if you look at, you know, some of the research with caffeine and fertility and cortisol, elevated cortisol levels in fertility, a lot of crossover happens there. So the rates of miscarriage go up, low birth weights, right? And like cortisol, we know also like it can modify the development of tissue and 
in a first trimester, it's like a really crucial time for a developing embryo and fetus, right? Because that's when all of the um, tissues and organs are developing brain waves. It, it, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff that's happening. And we know doctors say stress is bad. Yeah. So when you look at what caffeine does in the body and it's creating basically a stress mechanism, now how can how can you look at caffeine and go it's this is okay yeah you can't it's that's the it's, other yeah and what's really interesting is the half-life of caffeine is normally like three and a half to five hours but as you go into your second and third trimester and your hormone levels start to change the half-life goes up to like 18 hours yeah so you're not you're you're not detoxifying it and like detoxification pathways is a whole different topic yeah. right? when you told me that last night i was like what uh -huh. that's the craziest thing ever like 18 hours like yeah and you know it it crosses the placenta and your fetus is 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 detoxifying as well and being so Caffeine is like, it's not good. There are some people who do okay on caffeine, but generally speaking, it's it's not great. And what about matcha tea? Oh, matcha and green tea? Well, that's a whole different issue that you and I have discussed. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loves matcha and there are such great benefits to green tea and matcha, right? Like, um, people talk about its anti-carcinogenic properties. And that's amazing. So two things with green tea and matcha. Um, the reason it's so good for cancer is it promotes cell turnover, right? But in a developing fetus or embryo or fetus, you don't wanna promote cell turnover because you have this tiny little embryo that cell division is happening and you don't wanna turn those cells over. The other problem more with matcha than green tea is green tea likes to pull lead out of soil. So a lot of the matchas out there are very high in lead. And unless you know the source of your matcha, you really shouldn't be drinking a lot of matcha because you're exposing yourself, potentially exposing yourself to lead. Green tea isn't as big of an issue because the lead stays in the veins of the leaves. And so when you're drinking green tea, you're not actually drinking the tea leaves, but in matcha, you're actually grinding up and yeah. consuming it. Yeah. And I love matcha. I mean, there's, there's matcha out there. That's good. You just have to know where to get it. You have to know that they're testing yeah. for, for lead. Yes. Yeah. I know that that was one of so the things there, that people always assume that, oh, I can't drink coffee, but I can drink tea. Mm-hmm with caffeine, but you can drink decaffeinated tea, correct? Herbal teas. Herbal tea. Some of them, they're not all okay. I mean, there's even like, I've worked with some REs around town who don't want people drinking chamomile tea. Like they, there's, they're concerned about uterine contractions. I mean, I had a patient who wasn't allowed to drink anything really. Wow. Yeah. So if they were going to drink, like, so if you, can you drink a decaf coffee? Because no. you can still get up to seven milligrams of uh, caffeine per cup. And what so, about doing the alternative, like the mushroom coffees, things like that? It depends on what's what's in them and where they're coming from. Because I know there's a lot of companies out there now that are doing like mushroom coffee where it tastes like a coffee. It's a mushroom. I don't want to name a mm -hmm. brand because I don't want to like bash them or something. But there's, um, and they do like alternative to coffee. It's like a mushroom with like reishi and... You know, I think when you're looking at something like that, you have to start looking at the quality, like where the mushrooms are coming from, right? So even with coffee or teas, that aside, are they being, are they organically grown? Are there herbicides? Are there pesticides, right? So with the mushrooms, it would probably be the same circumstance. Right? Yeah, I mean, I think my rule of thumb always has been with like teas is that um, it's just like organic tea. There's no extracts, there's no anything. It's just organic tea. Mm -hmm. When you get the extracts or the flavors, that's where you get into the problem with, I don't know if that's. It depends on where the flavor comes from. So yeah, I don't usually buy any teas that have any flavor whatsoever. Pardon me? I usually um, purchase teas without any flavor whatsoever. Yeah. Someone's asking, what about dandelion coffee? 
Oh, well, dandelion coffee is, are they asking about the dandy blend? It just says, um, what about dandelion coffee? I think they might be asking about dandy blend because there's like uh, dandy blend is a coffee substitute that's made with, I believe it's like um, barley and rye and dandelion. I don't know if it's rye. I think it is rye because I, 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 I never like, I, someone gave it to me, gifted it to me and I didn't like it, but yeah. Yeah. That's yes. That's what they're talking about. Uh, yeah. That's definitely an option. They can drink that. For sure. That's not an issue then. I don't, yeah, no. Okay. So some of the teas, is there any herbal tea that you would say to stay away from? Well, you know, it's hard to say. So from a Chinese medicine standpoint, we have certain things that we look at. So you'd think that like, for example, like a mint tea is okay or a ginger tea. Oh yeah, Wendy's saying, but the acrylamides. All right, well, so... We, we can make a debate for a lot of things, you know, we could debate everything that we eat. But um, uh, as far as like teas, you know, one of the teas that is the safest as long as it's organic is um, like rooibos. But, Which you know, is interesting because like um, mint, in skincare, like everything. we recommend green tea for skin and then uh -huh. we also recommend rooibos. But I... I'm so sensitive to rooibos. It makes me like shake. It makes me crazy. Whereas green tea, I'm fine. I can drink sencha. I can drink matcha. I have no issue. But rooibos kills me. Yeah. I have no clue why, but it just, it's like. Yeah. Well, so this is why you're still always individualizing. There's nothing across the board. That's why even like, you know, caffeine. I mean, I still for any of my patients would say no caffeine, my pregnancy patients. But like generally speaking, when you're not trying to get pregnant, caffeine is problematic for pe a lot of people. And actually, but some people do OK. Right. So you right. just have to individualize. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So and then the other thing was that um, as far as like so basically everyone should really avoid caffeine. And there, is there any caffeine like in like because there's caffeine in chocolate? Mm hmm. So that would be an avoid as well if you're trying to conceive. White tea, green tea, black tea, coffee, chocolate. I mean, there was a study that was done on IVF patients, right? So like just if if it's IVF patients, we know they already are having problems getting yeah. pregnant, right? And this looked at men and women. And they broke them down into three groups and the amounts of caffeine that they were ingesting prior to yeah. an embryo transfer. And what they found was if they did greater than 50 milligrams of coffee per day, live birth rates were 14%. If they did zero to 50 milligrams of caffeine um, per day, live birth rates were 22%. But if they did less than two milligrams of caffeine per day, their live birth rates were 43%. And so we could see that if you go from having caffeine to zero caffeine, that it almost tripled live birth rates by reducing caffeine. There's a lot of animal studies that are done that show how caffeine in fact, uh, in, impacts um, follicular development, the contractions in the fallopian tubes to carry the egg into the uterus. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of interesting stuff out there that points us in the direction that caffeine isn't great. Yeah, Especially I just wish that they were telling trouble. it to everybody because I, I do hear that a lot of times with my clients. They're like, you know, oh, my doctor said it's okay. And I'm like, it's really not okay. Um, I know that be when I did IVF, my husband and I, um, he followed the same um, thing. He didn't drink caffeine before we did like um, in order when we went to, we did IVF. So he, in order to get his semen, we he had to eat healthy as well. So he was doing like whatever herbs, whatever vitamins, whatever thing. And he didn't do any caffeine, no alcohol, no caffeine, no, he was very low on sugar and no carbs. Yeah. He looked great. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys did really good. Yeah. Know? So, I mean, I think it's, it's really important information. Um, if you guys um, need an amazing acupuncturist, she's definitely, if you're trying to get pregnant or for anything, but especially for women um, out there or men. Um, Rena's your gal for sure. And I'm sure we're going to have to do another one because I have all these people like asking all these questions and we don't have time. Well, you know, 